Lech Walesa Polish, LXFAW SA Listen, born 29 September 1943 is a retired Polish politician and labor activist. He co-founded and headed Solidarity Solidarnosc, the Soviet bloc's first independent trade union, won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1983, and served as president of Poland from 1990 to 1995, while working at the Lenin Shipyard now Gdansk Shipyard, Walesa, an electrician, became a trade union activist, for which he was persecuted by the communist authorities, placed under surveillance, fired in 1976, and arrested several times. In August 1980 he was instrumental in political negotiations that led to the groundbreaking Gdansk Agreement between striking workers and the government. He co-founded the Solidarity Trade Union Movement. After martial law was imposed in Poland and Solidarity was outlawed, Walesa was again arrested. Released from custody, he continued his activism and was prominent in the establishment of the 1989 Round Table Agreement that led to semi-free parliamentary elections in June 1989 and to a Solidarity-led government. In the Polish general election of 1990, Walesa successfully ran for the newly re-established Office of President of Poland. He presided over Poland's transition from communism to a post-communist state, but his popularity waned and his role in Polish politics diminished after he narrowly lost the 1995 presidential election. Since the fall of communism in Poland, there have been allegations that Walesa had collaborated with the earlier communist secret police. In 2017 a lengthy investigation by the Institute of National Remembrance concluded that a handwriting study proved the authenticity of documents that Walesa had agreed to collaborate with the Communist Secret Police. Since the death of Wojciech Jaruzelski in 2014, Walesa is the oldest living former Polish president at age 75. Topic: <laughs> Personal life Walesa was born in Popowo, German-occupied Poland. His father, Bolesław Walesa (1908–1945), was a carpenter who was rounded up and interned in a forced labor camp at Malinik outpost of KL Stutthof by the German occupying forces before Lech was born. Bolesław returned home after the war, but died two months later from exhaustion and illness. Lech's mother, Felixa Walesa (1916–1975), has been credited with shaping her son's beliefs and tenacity. When Lech was nine, Felixa married her brother-in-law, Stanislaw Walesa (1916–1981), a farmer. Lech had three elder full siblings: Isabella (1934–2012), Edward (b. 1937), and Stanislaw (b. 1939), and three younger half-brothers: Tadeusz (b. 1946), Zygmunt (b. 1948), and Wojciech (1951–1988). In 1973, Lech's mother and stepfather emigrated to the U.S. for economic reasons. They lived in Jersey City, New Jersey, where Felixa died in a car accident in 1975, and Stanislaw died of a heart attack in 1981. Both of them were buried in Poland. In 1961, Lech graduated from primary and vocational school in nearby Chalin and Lipno as a qualified electrician. He worked as a car mechanic from 1961 to 1965, and then embarked on his two-year, obligatory military service, attaining the rank of corporal before beginning work on 12 July 1967 as an electrician at Lenin Shipyard Lenina, now called Gdansk Shipyard in Gdansk, on 8 November 1969, Walesa married Miroslawa Danuta Golos, who worked at a flower shop near the Lenin Shipyard. Soon after they married, she began using her middle name more often than her first name, per Lech's request. The couple had eight children, Bogdan B. 1970, Slavomir B. 1972, Shemislav 1974 to 2017, Jaroslav B. 1976, Magdalena B. 1979, Anna B. 1980, Maria Victoria B. 1982, and Brigida B. 1985. As of 2016, Anna is running her father's office in Gdansk and Jaroslaw is a European MP. In 2008, Walesa underwent a coronary artery stent placement and the implantation of a cardiac pacemaker at the Houston Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas. Topic. Solidarity movement 
From early in his career, Walesa was interested in workers' concerns. In 1968, he encouraged shipyard colleagues to boycott official rallies that condemned recent student strikes. He was a charismatic leader, who helped organize the illegal 1970 protests at the Gdansk shipyard when workers protested the government's decree raising food prices, and he was considered for the position of chairman of the strike committee. The strike's outcome, which involved the deaths of over 30 workers, galvanized Willess's views on the need for change. In June 1976, Willessa lost his job at the Gdansk shipyard because of his continued involvement in illegal unions, strikes, and a campaign to commemorate the victims of the 1970 protests. Afterwards he worked as an electrician for several other companies but his activism led to him continually being laid off and he was jobless for long periods. Walesa and his family were under constant surveillance by the Polish secret police, his home and workplace were always bugged. Over the next few years, he was arrested several times for participating in dissident activities. Walesa worked closely with the Workers' Defense Committee Corps, a group that emerged to lend aid to people arrested after the 1976 labor strikes and to their families. In June 1978 he became an activist of the underground free trade unions of the coast On 14 August 1980, another rise in food prices led to a strike at the Lenin shipyard in Gdansk, of which Walesa was one of the instigators. Walesa scaled the shipyard fence and quickly became one of the strike leaders. The strike inspired other similar strikes in Gdansk, which then spread across Poland. Walesa headed the Inter-Enterprise Strike Committee, coordinating the workers at Gdansk and at 20 other plants in the region. On 31 August the government, represented by Mieczysław Jagielski, signed an accord the Gdansk Agreement with the Strike Coordinating Committee. The agreement granted the Lenin shipyard workers the right to strike and permitted them to form an independent trade union. The Strike Coordinating Committee legalized itself as the National Coordinating Committee of the Solidarność Solidarity Free Trade Union, and Walesa was chosen as chairman of the committee. The Solidarity Trade Union quickly grew, ultimately claiming over 10 million members—more than a quarter of Poland's population. Walesa's role in the strike, in the negotiations, and in the newly formed independent trade union gained him fame on the international stage. On March 10, 1981, through the introduction of Walesa's former superior in army, Walesa met Jaruzelski for the first time in the office building of the Council of Ministers for three hours. During the meeting, Jaruzelski and Walesa agreed that mutual trust was necessary if the problems of Poland were to be solved. Walesa said, It's not the case that the name of socialism is bad. Only some people spoiled the name of socialism. He also complained and criticized the government. Jaruzelski informed Walesa of the coming war games of Warsaw Pact from March 16 to 25, hoping Walesa could help maintain the social order and avoid anti-Soviet remarks. Jaruzelski also reminded Walesa that the Solidarity had used foreign funds. Walesa joked, We don't have to take only dollars. We can take corns, fertilizers, whatever is okay. I talked with Mr. Kania before that I would take everything from the enemy. The more the better, until the enemy was weakened no more. Quote dot. Walesa held his position until 13 December 1981, when General Wojciech Jaruzelski declared martial law in Poland. Walesa and many other Solidarity leaders and activists were arrested, he was incarcerated for 11 months until 14 November 1982 at Kailice, Otwok, and Arlamau, eastern towns near the Soviet border. On 8 October 1982 Solidarity was outlawed. In 1983 Walesa applied to return to the Gdansk shipyard as an electrician. The same year, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He was unable to accept it himself, fearing Poland's government would not let him back into the country. His wife Danuta accepted the prize on his behalf. Through the mid 1980s, Walesa continued underground solidarity related activities. Every issue of the leading underground weekly publication Tagodnik Mazaus bore his motto, Solidarity will not be divided or destroyed. Following a 1986 amnesty for solidarity activists, Walesa co founded the Provisional Council of NSZZ Solidarity, Timchasoa Rada NSZZ Solidarnosc, the first overt legal solidarity entity since the declaration of martial law. 
From 1987 to 1990, he organized and led the semi-illegal Provisional Executive Committee of the Solidarity Trade Union. In mid-1988 he instigated work stoppage strikes at the Gdansk shipyard. He was frequently hauled in for interrogations by the Polish secret police, the Security Service during the 1980s. On many of these occasions, Danuta—who was even more anti-communist than her husband— was known to openly taunt SB agents when they picked Lech up. After months of strikes and political deliberations, at the conclusion of the 10th plenary session of the Polish United Workers' Party, PZPR, the Polish Communist Party, the government agreed to enter into round table negotiations that lasted from February to April 1989. Walesa was an informal leader of the non governmental side in the negotiations. During the talks, he traveled throughout Poland giving speeches in support of the negotiations. At the end of the talks, the government signed an agreement to re-establish the Solidarity Trade Union and to organize semi-free elections to the Polish Parliament. In accordance with the Round Table Agreement, only members of the Communist Party and its allies could stand for 65% of the seats in the lower house. The same, in December 1988, Walesa co-founded the Solidarity Citizens Committee. This was ostensibly an advisory body, but in practice, a political party that won the parliament parliamentary elections in June 1989. Solidarity took all the seats in the same that were subject to free elections, and all but one seat in the newly re-established Senate. Walesa was one of Solidarity's most public figures, he was an active campaigner, appearing on many campaign posters, but did not run for parliament himself. Solidarity winners in the same elections were referred to as Walesa's team, or Lech's team because they had all appeared on their election posters with Walesa, while ostensibly only chairman of Solidarity, Walesa played a key role in practical politics. In August 1989, he persuaded leaders of parties formerly allied with the Communist Party to form a non-communist coalition government—the first non-communist government in the Soviet bloc. The parliament elected Tadeusz Mazowiecki as the first non-communist prime minister of Poland in over 40 years. Presidency Following the June 1989 parliamentary elections, Walesa was disappointed some of his former fellow campaigners were satisfied to govern alongside former communists. He decided to run for the newly re-established office of president, using the slogan, I don't want to, but I have to. Ni chi, ale mush. On 9 December 1990 Walesa won the presidential election, defeating Prime Minister Mazowiecki and other candidates to become Poland's first freely elected head of state in 63 years, and the first non-communist head of state in 45 years. In 1993 he founded his own political party, the Nonpartisan Bloc for Support of Reforms BBWR, the grouping's Polish-language acronym echoed that of Józef Pilsudski's Nonpartisan Bloc for Cooperation with the Government of 1928–35, likewise an ostensibly non-political organization. During his presidency, Walesa saw Poland through privatization and transition to a free market economy the Balcerowicz Plan, Poland's 1991 first completely free parliamentary elections, and a period of redefinition of the country's foreign relations. He successfully negotiated the withdrawal of Soviet troops from Poland and won a substantial reduction in foreign debts. Walesa supported Poland's entry into NATO and the European Union, both of which occurred after his presidency, in 1999 and 2004, respectively. In the early 1990s, he proposed the creation of a sub regional security system called NATO BIS. The concept was supported by right wing and populist movements in Poland but garnered little support abroad. Poland's neighbors, some of which, e.g., Lithuania, had recently regained independence and tended to see the proposal as Polish neo imperialism. Walesa has been criticized for a confrontational style and for instigating war at the top, whereby former Solidarity allies clashed with one another, causing annual changes of government. This increasingly isolated Walesa on the political scene. As he lost political allies, he came to be surrounded by people who were viewed by the public as incompetent and disreputable. Mudslinging during election campaigns tarnished his reputation. 
Some thought Walesa, an ex-electrician with no higher education, was too plain-spoken and too undignified for the post of president. Others thought him too erratic in his views or complained he was too authoritarian and that he sought to strengthen his own power at the expense of the same. Willess's national security adviser Jacek Merkel credited the shortcomings of Willess's presidency to his inability to comprehend the office of the president as an institution. He was an effective union leader capable of articulating what the workers felt but as president he had difficulty delegating power or navigating bureaucracy. Willess's problems were compounded by the difficult transition to a market economy. In the long run, it was seen as highly successful, but it lost Willess's government much popular support. Willess's BBWR performed poorly in the 1993 parliamentary elections. At times, his popular support dwindled to 10%, and he narrowly lost the 1995 presidential election, winning 33.11% of the vote in the first round and 48.28% in the runoff against Aleksander Kwasniewski, who represented represented the resurgent Polish post-communists the Democratic Left Alliance SLD. Willess's fate was sealed by his poor handling of the media, in televised debates he appeared incoherent and rude, in response to Kwasniewski's extended hand at the end of the first of the two debates, he replied that the post-communist leader could shake his leg. After the election Willessa said he was going into political retirement, and his role in politics became increasingly marginal. Post-presidency After losing the 1995 election, Walesa announced he would return to work as an electrician at the Gdansk shipyard. Soon afterwards he changed his mind and chose to travel around the world on a lecture circuit. Walesa developed a portfolio of three lectures. The impact of an expanded NATO on global security. Democracy, the never-ending battle. And Solidarity, the new millennium, and reads them at universities and public events with an appearance fee of around £50,000 In 1995 he founded the Lech Walesa Institute, a think tank with a mission to popularize the achievements of Polish solidarity, educate young generations, promote democracy, and build civil society in Poland and around the world. In 1997 he founded a new party, Christian Democracy of the Third Polish Republic, hoping it would help him to successfully run in future elections. Willess's contention for the 2000 presidential election ended with a crushing defeat when he polled 1.01% of the vote. His humiliation was increased because Aleksander Kwasniewski, who was re-elected in the first round with 54% of the vote, is a former communist apparatchik. Walesa polled in seventh place, after which he announced his withdrawal from Polish politics. In 2006, Walesa quit Solidarity in protest of the Union's support of the ruling right wing Law and Justice Party, and Lech and Jarosław Kaczynski twin brothers who had been prominent in Solidarity and were now serving as the country's president and prime minister, respectively. The main point of disagreement was the Kaczynska's focus on rooting out those who had been involved in communist rule and their party's attempt to make public all the files of the former communist secret police. Until then only members of the government and parliament had to declare any connection with the former security services. Willessa and his supporters argued the so-called transparency legislation advocated by the government might turn into a witch hunt and the more than 500,000 Poles who had possibly collaborated with the communist secret police could face exposure. Despite waning popularity at home, Willessa's international reputation remained untouched. He continued his lecture circuit around the world, occasionally appearing in headlines. In 2014 in a widely publicized interview, Walesa expressed his disappointment in another Nobel laureate, U.S. President Barack Obama, he told CNN, When he was elected there was great hope in the world. We were hoping that Obama would reclaim moral leadership for America, but that failed. In terms of politics and morality America no longer leads the world. Walesa also accused Obama of not deserving his Nobel Peace Prize. During the 2012 U.S. presidential campaign, he endorsed Obama's opponent Mitt Romney. In September 2015, Walesa again hit the headlines after sharing his thoughts on the migrant crisis in Europe with media, saying, Watching the refugees on television, I noticed that they are well fed, well dressed, and maybe even are richer than we are. If Europe opens its gates, soon millions will come through and while living among us will start exercising their own customs, including beheading. 
In August 2017, ten Nobel Peace Prize laureates, including Walesa, urged Saudi Arabia to stop the executions of 14 young people for participating in the 2011-12 Saudi Arabian protests. <laughs> Walesa and secret police Since the early 1980s there have been allegations that in the 1970s Walesa had served as an informant for the Polish security services. Walesa vehemently denied the allegations, and in 2000 a special court cleared him of the alleged collaboration. The controversy resurfaced in 2008 with the publication of a book that purported to show that Walesa, codenamed Bolak, had been an operative for the security services from 1970 to 1976. The question resurfaced again in February 2016, when the Institute of National Remembrance seized materials from the widow of Czesla Kizak, a former Minister of the Interior, that were said to document Willess's role as a spy for the security services. <laughs> <laughs> Court ruling On 12 August 2000, Walesa, who was running a presidential campaign at the time, was cleared by the Special Lustration Court of Charges that he collaborated with the Communist Era's secret services and reported on the activities of his fellow shipyard workers, due to the lack of evidence. Anti-communists Peter Namsky, one of the first members of the Workers' Defense Committee that led to the Solidarity Trade Union, and Antony Macherevich, Walesa's former interior minister, testified against him in the closed vetting trial. Namsky, who said he testified with a heavy heart, expressed his disappointment that Walesa made a mistake by not going openly to the public, and he has missed an important chance. According to Namsky, the court cleared Walesa on technical grounds because it did not find certain original documents many of which had been destroyed since 1989 offered sufficient proof that Walesa was lying. In 1992, Namsky, as a head of the State Protection Office, started the process of screening people suspected of being communist collaborators in Poland. In June that year he helped Antony Macierewicz prepare a list of 64 members of the government and parliament who were named as spies in the police records, these included Walesa, then the Polish president. Walesa's name was included on the list after a wrenching internal debate about the virtues of honesty versus political discretion. In response to the publication of this list, President Walesa immediately engineered the fall of Prime Minister Jan Olszewski and the dismissal of Interior Minister Macierewicz. A parliamentary committee later concluded Walesa had not signed an agreement with the secret police. A 1997 Polish law made the vetting a requirement for those seeking high public office. According to the law, it is not a crime to have collaborated, but those who deny it and are found to have lied are banned from political life for ten years. The 2000 presidential election was the first use of this law, despite helping Walesa in 2005 to receive the official status of a victim of communist regime. From the Institute of National Remembrance IPN, this court ruling did not convince many Poles. In November 2009 Walesa sued the President of Poland, Lech Kaczynski over his repeated collaboration allegations. Five months later, Kaczynski failed to invite Walesa to the commemoration service at Katyn, which almost certainly saved Walesa's life because the presidential plane crashed, killing all on board. In August 2010, Walesa lost a libel case against Krzysztof Wysokowski, his former fellow activist, who also publicly accused Walesa of being a communist agent in 1970s. Topic. 2008 book The most comprehensive analysis of Walesa's possible collaboration with secret police was provided in a 2008 book The SB Sluzba Bezpichenstwa, Secret Police and Lech Walesa, a biographical contribution SB a Lech Walesa. Per Zizinik du Biographie. The book was written by two historians from the Institute of National Remembrance, Slavomir Senkovic and Peter Gonterchik, and included documents from the archives of the secret police that were inherited by the Institute. Among the documents were registration cards, memos, notes from the secret police, and reports from the informant. The book's authors said Walesa, working under the code name Bolik, was a secret police informant from 1970 after he was released from the arrest till 1976 before he was fired from the shipyard. According to them, he wrote reports and informed on more than 20 people and some of them were persecuted by the communist police. 
He identified people and eavesdropped on his colleagues at work while they were listening to Radio Free Europe for example." The book describes the fate of the seven of his alleged victims, information regarding others was destroyed or stolen from the files. According to them, Walesa received over 13,000 zlotys as remuneration for his services from the SB, while the monthly salary at the time was about 3,500 zlotys. The authors said oppositionist activity in Poland in the first half of 1970s was minimal and Walesa's role in it was quite marginal. However, according to the book, despite formally renouncing his ties with SB in 1976, Walesa went on to have contacts with communist officials. The book also said that during his 1990 1995 presidency, Walesa used his office to destroy the evidence of his collaboration with secret police by removing incriminating documents from the archives. According to the book, historians discovered that with the help of the state intelligence agency, Walesa, Interior Minister Andrei Milchanowski, and other members of Walesa's administration, had borrowed from the archives the secret police files that had connections to Walesa, and returned them with key pages removed. When it was discovered at the turn of 1995–96, the following prosecutorial inquiry was discontinued for political reasons despite the case attracting much public attention. Slavomir Senkovich also said that in 1983, when Walesa was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, the secret police tried to embarrass him and leaked information about Walesa's previous collaboration with the government. By this time though, Walesa was already so popular that most Poles did not believe the official media and dismissed the allegations as a manipulation by the communist authorities. The book's first print run sold out in Poland within hours. The book received substantial coverage in the media, provoked nationwide debate, and was noted by the international press. Walesa vowed to sue the authors but never did. Kizak archives. On 18 February 2016, the INR in Warsaw announced it had seized a package of original documents that allegedly proved Walesa was a paid Polish security service informant. The documents dated from the period 1970-1976, they were seized from the home of a recently deceased former interior minister, General Czesław Kizak. The document's authenticity was confirmed by an archival expert, but the prosecutors demanded a handwriting examination. Eventually, the requested examination concluded that the documents were authentic and, hence, Walesa had collaborated with the communist secret police. The dossier consists of two folders. The first is a personal file containing 90 pages of documents, including a handwritten commitment to cooperate with Polish Security Service dated 21 December 1970, and signed Lech Walesa – Bolik with a pledge he would never admit his collaboration with secret police, not even to family. The file also contains the confirmations of having received funds. The second is a work file, which contains 279 pages of documents, including numerous reports by Bolik on his co-workers at Gdansk shipyard, and notes by security service officers from meetings with him. According to one note, Walesa agreed to collaborate out of fear of persecution after the workers' protest in 1970. The documents also show that at first Bolik eagerly provided information on opinions and actions by his co-workers and took money for the information, but his enthusiasm diminished and the quality of his information decreased until he was deemed no longer valuable and collaboration with him was terminated in 1976. The sealed dossier also contained a letter, handwritten by Kizak in April 1996, in which he informs the director of the Polish Central Archives of Modern Records about the accompanying files documenting the collaboration of Walesa with the Polish Security Service and asks him not to publish this information until five years after Walesa's death. In his letter Kizak said he kept the documents out of reach, before the 1989 revolution, trying to protect Walesa's reputation, and afterwards to make sure they did not disappear or were used for political reasons. This letter and the accompanying documents had never been sent. On 16 February 2016, about three months after Kizak's death, his widow Maria approached the Institute of National Remembrance and offered to sell the documents to the archives for 90,000 zlotys $23,000. However, according to Polish law, all documents of the political police must be handed in to the state. The administration of the institute notified the prosecutor's office, which conducted a police search of the Kizak's house and seized all the historic documents. Maria Kizak later said she had not read her husband's letter and had made a mistake. 
Topic: <laughs> Willess's response. For years Walesa vehemently denied collaborating with the Polish Security Service and dismissed the incriminating files as forgeries created by the SB to compromise him. Walesa also denies that during his presidency he removed documents incriminating him from the archives. Until 2008 he denied having ever seen his Security Service file. After the publication of the book SB Alech Walesa in 2008, he said that while he was president, I did borrow the file, but didn't remove anything from it. I saw there were some documents there about me and that they were clearly forgeries. I told my secretaries to tape up and seal the file. I wrote don't open on it. But someone didn't obey, removed the papers, now casting suspicion on me." Willess's interior minister Andrei Milchanowski denied the cover-up and said he had the full legal right to make those documents available to President Willessa and no original documents were removed from the file, which contained only photocopies. Walesa has offered conflicting statements regarding the authenticity of the documents. Initially he has appeared to come close to an admission, saying in 1992, in December 1970, I signed three or four documents to escape from the secret police. In his 1987 autobiography A Way of Hope, Walesa said, it is also the truth that I had not left that clash completely pure. They gave me a condition, signature. And then I signed. He denies he acted upon the collaboration agreement. However, in his later years Walesa said all the documents are forgeries and told BBC in 2008, You will not find any signature of mine agreeing to collaborate anywhere. In 2009, after publication of another biography connecting him with the secret police Lech Walesa, Idea and History by Pavel Zizek, Walesa threatened to leave Poland if historians continue to question his past. He said that before revealing such information, a historian must decide whether this serves Poland. After the accusations against him resurfaced with the discovery of the Kizak dossier on 16 February 2016, Walesa called the files lies, slander and forgeries," and said he, "...never took money and never made any spoken or written report on anyone." He said of the Polish public, which was about to believe in the allegations, "...you have betrayed me, not me you," and, "...it was I who safely led Poland to a complete victory over communism." On his blog on 20 February 2016 Walesa said in the 1970s a secret police officer begged him to sign the financial documents because this officer lost money handed to him to purchase a vehicle. Walesa appealed to this officer to step forward now and clear him of the accusations. <laughs> Religious and political views Walesa is a devout Roman Catholic. He is a staunch opponent of abortion. In 1993, during his presidency, he signed a law restricting abortions in Poland. This law reversed the virtually free access to abortion that existed since 1956 and limited its use to cases in which the woman's life is in danger, pregnancy has resulted from rape or incest, or the fetus is irreparably damaged. Doctors who violate the rules now face up to two years in prison. This abortion law is one of the most restrictive in Europe, deeply divided the country, and saw the former Solidarity Coalition split between liberals and conservatives. The Polish Catholic Church supported Walesa, but public opinion polls indicated most polls favored retaining a liberal abortion law. 1.3 million polls signed a petition demanding a plebiscite rather than governmental imposition of the law. In 1994, a group of women legislators tried to ease the criteria for abortion. Walesa vetoed their amendment. In 2011, Walesa rejected Lithuania's Order of Vytautas the Great as a result of constant discrimination on the part of the Lithuanian government towards its Polish minority. In 2013, Walesa suggested the creation of a political union between Poland and Germany. Walesa is well known for his anti gay position. In 2013 he said on Polish television that homosexual people have no right to a prominent role in politics. They have to know that they are a minority and must adjust to smaller things. He also said homosexual MPs should sit behind a wall in a parliament. Despite sharp international criticism and a legal complaint of propaganda of hate against a sexual minority, Willessa refused to apologize for his comments. At a political rally in 2000, he described gay people as sick and said, 
I believe those people need medical treatment. During the drawing up of a new Polish constitution in 1995, President Walesa argued against the inclusion of gay rights provisions. In 2014 city authorities of San Francisco renamed Walesa Street because of his anti-gay remarks. A deputy speaker of the Polish parliament said Walesa's anti-gay position could jeopardize his international career as a human rights speaker. Honours <laughs> <laughs> In 1983, Walesa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Since then he has received more than 30 state decorations and more than 50 awards from 30 countries, including Order of the Bath UK, Order of Merit Germany, Legion of Honor France, and European Human Rights Prize EU 1989. In 2011, he declined to accept the Lithuanian Highest Order, citing his displeasure at Lithuania's policy towards the Polish diaspora. In 2008, he established the Lech Walesa Award. In 2004, Gdansk International Airport was officially renamed Gdansk Lech Walesa Airport and Walesa's signature was incorporated into the airport's logo. A college hall in Northeastern Illinois University Chicago, six streets, and five schools in Canada, France, Sweden and Poland also were named after Lech Walesa. Walesa was named Man of the Year by Time Magazine 1981, Financial Times 1980, Saudi Gazette 1989, and 12 other newspapers and magazines. He was awarded with over 45 honorary doctorates by universities around the world, including Harvard University and Sorbonne. He was named an honorary karate black belt by International Traditional Karate Federation. Walesa is also an honorary citizen of more than 30 cities, including London, Buffalo, and Turin. In the United States, Walesa was the first recipient of the Liberty Medal, in 1989. That year, he also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom and became the first non head of state to address a joint meeting of the United States Congress. Walesa symbolically represented Europe by carrying the Olympic flag at the opening ceremony of the 2002 Winter Olympics. In 2004, he represented ten newly acceded EU countries during the official accession ceremony in Strasbourg. In 1993, the heraldic authority of the Kingdom of Sweden assigned Walesa a personal coat of arms on the occasion of his admittance into the Royal Order of the Seraphim. <laughs> Cultural references Lech Walesa has been portrayed, as himself or a character based on him, in a number of feature films. The two most notable of them are Walesa. Man of Hope 2013 is a biographical drama by Oscar-winning filmmaker Andre Vida about the lives of Walesa Robert Wiekovich and his wife Danuta Agnieszka Grahowska from 1970 to 1989. It shows Walesa's change from a shipyard worker into a charismatic labor leader. The film was shot in the historical locations of the depicted events, including the former Lenin shipyard. It won three awards, including Silver Hugo for Robert Wiekovich at Chicago International Film Festival and a Passanetti Award for Maria Rosaria Omaggio at Venice Film Festival, and was nominated for five more awards. Man of Iron is another André Vita film about the Solidarity Movement. The main character, a young worker Masiej Tomczyk is involved in the anti-communist labor movement. Tomczyk is clearly portrayed as a parallel to Walesa, who appears as himself in the movie. The film was made during the brief relaxation of censorship in Poland between the formation of Solidarity in August 1980 and its suppression in December 1981. Wajda was awarded both the Palme d'Or and the prize of the ecumenical jury at the Cannes Film Festival for the film. In 1982 it was nominated for Oscar as the Best Foreign Language Film and gained seven other awards and nominations. Both of these films were produced in Poland. In December 1989, Warner Brothers intended to produce a major movie about Walesa, to be made in 1990 and released in 1991. The company paid Walesa a $1 million fee for the rights to produce a biopic. Although the movie was never made, this payment sparked controversy in Poland when five years later it emerged that Walesa concealed this income to avoid paying taxes on it. The Gdansk tax office initiated a tax fraud case against Walesa but it was later dismissed because the five year statute of limitations had already run out. In 1982, Bono was inspired by Walesa to write U2's first hit single, New Year's Day. 
Coincidentally, the Polish authorities lifted martial law on 1 January 1983, the same day this single was released. Walesa also became a hero of a number of Polish pop songs, including a satirical 1991 hit titled Nie Wierszy Elektrykum Don't Trust the Electricians from the second studio album by the punk rock band Big CYC which featured a caricature of Walesa on its cover. Patrick Daly's chamber opera Solidarity, starring Kristen Brown as Walesa, was premiered by the San Francisco Cabaret Opera in Berkeley, California. In September 2009, Sid Meier's Civilization V video game lists Lech Walesa amongst its world leader rankings. Walesa is ranked 11th on a scale of 1 to 21, with Augustus Caesar ranked as the best world leader of all time and Dan Quayle as the worst. Walesa is immediately outranked by Simone Bolivar and is ranked just above Ivan the Terrible. Topic: <inaudible> Publications. Walesa, Lech, 1987. A Way of Hope. New York: Henry Holt and Company. ISBN 0805006680. LCCN 87021194. OL2391768M. Walesa, Lech. 1991. Droga du Wolnosi Road to Freedom in Polish. Warsaw, Editions Spotkania. ISBN 8385195033. LCCN 955586. OL1293474M. Walesa, Lech. 1992. The Struggle and the Triumph, an Autobiography. Translated by Philip, Franklin. New York, Arcade Publishing. ISBN 1559701498. OL 1593475. Walesa, Lech, 1995. W. S. Zistko, Ko Robi, Robi Dla Polski All That I Do, I Do for Poland in Polish. Warsaw, Kancelaria Prezidenta RP. ISBN 8390434709. OL 183205 Topic Notes Topic References Topic Further reading Slavomir Senkovich, Walesa, Chilowik Z. Techki, Walesa, The Man in the File, Zysk ISK, Zysk and Company, 2013, ISBN 978-83-7785-356-6. Katarzyna Szuczyk. Walesa Bile Shantazawani Perzas Bezpik. Walesa was blackmailed by security. An interview with Professor Slavomir Senkovich, Gwiazda Polarna, Vol. 108, No. 5, 4 March 2017, pp. 7 8. External links Official website of Lech Walesa Institute Official profile on Facebook Polish Solidarity Union leader Lech Walesa addresses joint meeting of the U.S. Congress.